I, I don't I don't get voter fatigue. I mean, I do when it comes to politics. Like, I mean, my goodness, have you looked at anybody that you have the opportunity, the privilege to? They sell you on voting for to be a part of any local or state or federal government. I mean, my goodness, no wonder why you would suffer a voter fatigue. But who would suffer voter fatigue when it comes to naming the best player in the NBA? And I got to be honest with you, although they're not the best team record-wise in the East, is there anybody out there that is truly going against both Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks in the Eastern Conference? I'm in Philadelphia. I'm about to see the MVP handed over to Joel Embiid, all of that. I'm not going to say anything like that where, oh, the Sixers have a walk in the park. They can't even beat Atlanta in the second round. Well, what are you, Doc Rivers is going to be out. James Harden out. The Bucks. Look at the strength alone of one man, and he's going to ride that wave to the NBA Finals because he was snubbed. He's the best player in the league, and it's not even close. Five bets, five minutes. Subscribe. Let's hit the thumbs up button, please. Let's hit the clock as well as we open up with the Pacers. That's right. Your Indiana Pacers, the team that is dead, left for nothing, eliminated. Completely cooked. Won just three of their last 10 games. But wait. The New York Knicks are on fire right now. The New York Knicks are clearly heading into the postseason with a lot of momentum. Do they really need to put a smackdown on the Indiana Pacers on the road? In fact, as we see, you're not going to just win every single game. The letdown, the, okay, you know, we've got ahead of ourselves. You're looking in too far ahead of your skis to the point where it's just like you're overlooking a team to the point where it's just like you're not giving a shit. All of these different factors. This is a perfect end-of-the-season type scenario where the Pacers, we have seen past couple of nights large spreads cover. So I'm going to open up with the Pacers plus eight and a half at home against the Knicks. Now, we move on to the Celtics, who just took that tight loss to the Sixers, and it's not like, oh, they're mad, they're angry, anything like that. It's just that they're returning home to take on a Toronto team that just still is not great on the road and is still not a team, despite winning 7 of 10, that I think is going to be able to win this game first and foremost and then ultimately stay within five points. Six, seven points is probably how this thing ends. I can see us being on the right side of a tight cover here, primarily because when you look at the Celtics overall, this is a team, and I don't know, Brown's been out, and that's that's a concern, right? But minus Jalen Brown's absence, I don't think that you're too concerned. Like Peyton Pritchard being out is not going to kill you against the Sixers and then the Raptors. This is a team at home that's really good and I think is looking to kind of just not, not respond as much as it is like get back to normal following that loss. It was not, not a great loss, not a great loss by any means. Not that there are many, but not, not a great loss. This is going to be a really bad loss for the Dallas Mavericks. Screw your points. You keep your points. You want to change this parlay into a five and five and make it to the six points you get for the Kings. That's fine. I do not need those six points north of two to one. I absolutely and jumping on Sacramento. They've clinched. They're locked in. Technically, they can't even get caught, but they could move up to fight Memphis. Probably not going to happen. You're going to see more of the same here where it's just like they put up a lot of points and some guys score, some guys do well in the box score, others don't. It's not going to be this one or two man show of Sabonis and Fox every single time. You just didn't see that against the Pelicans and they're still good enough to win. I think tonight, Dallas, this is really just about fading Dallas and how tight they are, knowing that there's talk about shutting down Luka, Kyrie coming back or not, all this shit up in the air. They've lost three straight. I'll take the Kings to win this thing outright. Now, two little more to go here in the final minute and 40. I, you know, check out the NBA parlay video. We have a play on Russell Westbrook. In this case, though, I think I'm just going to go team props over. I think both teams are good about 117, 118. So I look at the Clippers total. I think that makes sense. I look at the Lakers total. I think, wait a second, that's a little low. 
LeBron James, all these guys aside, because you never know, you never know until you know what the injury situation with the Lakers, but it's really just what we know now. And that's D'Angelo Russell isn't playing. So Anthony Davis, LeBron James, Schroeder back in the starting lineup. This is what you can expect from a team that should score, I would think, in the 118, 120 range against this Clippers team that is, as we know, dealing with some absences. And also there is the whole Russell Westbrook thing. I didn't want to make a big deal out of that, you know, the, the whole Russell Westbrook thing, in case, in case you forgot. One player prop before we get out of here. It's my favorite of the night. Bulls, Bucks. Look, the Bulls are probably in this game. And they probably hang. They're probably up a little bit. It's not going to be because DeMar DeRozan scores 30. So this is a really difficult matchup specifically for DeRozan. We'll see what happens with the front court and what they do on the wing there with Milwaukee, who's playing, who's not. But it's going to be tough for DeRozan to get us 24, 25 points. I'd rather fade in this case. I'd rather fade in a game which, again, I think they're in it, but it's more backcourt. We'll see what Vooch is able to do in this matchup too couple of guys, bigs that like to play outside a little. I think that can work and also limit a guy like DeRozan's points. There you have it. Five bets in five minutes. Simple, simple, simple stuff. All right? I want you to come hang with us on the Discord if you can. I'm going to give you half off your first week. ES Insider is the code. ES Insider is the code. Simple, simple stuff. We are crushing on a regular basis, routine basis. I'll get back to the five and five, but... You know, it's, it's just a lot of fun what we're doing here. So look at this. Five bets in five minutes. Hey, man, we just did this on the Discord last night. You know that Tuesday dinger thing gave out Kyle Schwarber? It's a smash. It's a smash on the Discord. I mean, the parlay missed by one leg, unfortunately, JT Thor. But everything else hit on that parlay. Unfortunately, that doesn't count. But the home run did. Let's do it. That's what we're doing, man. Big stuff popping up on the Discord. Multiple parlays. We're doing a lot of fun stuff. Regular parlays, live betting. We're doing it all. We want you to be part of it. Here's your five and five on the way. Oh, look at this. Already dropped. Pacers plus eight and a half. Celtics minus four and a half. Kings on the money line. Over 113 and a half team total for the Lakers. And yeah, we'll stay under 23 and a half points for DeMar DeRozan. On your way out, head to Bet365, Colorado, New Jersey, Virginia, Come on, Ohio. You have to be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Take 60 seconds. Sign up. Deposit 10 bucks. Claim that. Bet a dollar on anything, anything on Bet365 and watch that turn into $200. Awesome stuff. We'll see you tomorrow.